somebody allows you to skip because they're just in such a happy mood and want to hang out with us. So everyone, remember, it's Monday. Put some patience in your pocket. Be kind to each other and confer. Uh, who is Christopher Lewis? Your Honor, I'm T. Chris Lewis. Yes, who are you here for? Your Honor, I'm here for Jeff Kesey. All right, we're just waiting for Mr. Uh, Kesey. Uh, thank you. All right, so are you ready for sentencing? We are, Judge. All right, just give me a moment. Can I see the file on PC, please? Yes. It's K E E S E E. All right, so Mr. Lewis, as soon as you find a stable, are you driving or no? I am parking, Judge. So All right, as soon as you're. Minutes. All right, as soon as you're parked and ready to go, we'll take that matter up. I am ready, Judge. I have just parked. All right. All right. Uh, Brenna, you ready? Ready. Uh, court is going to call 2022 CR 3040, State of Texas versus Jeffrey DeMar Kesey. Can I have parties uh, announced for the record? And Mr. Kesey, if you'll approach, please. Michael Villarreal for the state. For the defense. Your Honor, T. Christopher Lewis on behalf of Jeffrey Kesey. All right, Mr. Kesey, you entered a plea of no contest on June 27th. And you entered a plea. Just one moment. You entered a plea to injury to a child, which is a third degree felony. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of five years. There's a $1,500 fine. Uh, the state is remaining silent on your application and there's to be no unsupervised contact with Valentin Kesey. And you've applied for deferred adjudication. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I can't. All right. Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report state? No objections from the state. Defense, you have objections? No objection, Your Honor. I cannot hear you. All no right. objection, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I feel All delayed. Right. All right. Thank you. All right. So the state um, is silent on the application. Uh, defense, do you have any witnesses? Your Honor, Mr. Kesey will be my witness. All right. Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. All right. You can lower your hand. You're going to have to lower your mask because no one can hear. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Could you state your name for the record? Jeffrey. All right. Thanks. I didn't hear the last part. Your voice went down. All right. Uh, defense. And hey, Mr. Kesey, you understand why you're here today. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and you remember being interviewed and doing a PSI, is that correct? Yes, sir. And during that PSI, you expressed uh, a sorrow and some, uh, you explained to the PSI interviewer uh, the lessons you've learned from this experience, is that correct? Yes, very much so. Okay, and briefly for the court, can you explain to the judge kind of what you've uh, gathered from this experience? I've gathered a lot of um, the classes I was took through CPS, I learned how to deal with challenging situations and viewpoints on how to instruct the next kids better. Also, being the first one in my family ever arrested. This has had open eyes to the system. Um, 
Yeah, very much. Uh, sorry, I apologize. I wish this never happened. It's the worst demon I've ever had. That should have worked. Okay, you're going to have to speak up because I know your attorney can't hear you. Okay. Um, this is the worst uh, demon I could have on my back, which is the should have, would have, hit it demon. And there's a lot of things I wish I could redo and do over. But uh, I made the mistake. I'm being mad enough to deal with this. No, it's not a mistake. It's a choice. It was a choice. Yes, you're right. It was, it was a choice. It was a poor choice. A very, very poor choice for my son and my family. I put everything that I worked so hard for at risk, <laughs> staying out of trouble for 44 years at risk. It was something that could have been handled way better, way different. And, and Mr. Casey, through, through your counseling with CPS and going through your uh, safety plan, did you understand effective ways to instill proper discipline with your son? Oh, very much, very much so. I have a newfound aspect on how to form discipline for my son and my daughter, um, unlike uh, how I was raised and how, how I was taught, which seems to be working a lot better. We're getting better results out of him and my daughter. And to your knowledge, CPS has cleared you of all you're done with CPS's case has been dismissed from a CPS perspective? Yes, all of, uh, everything I know of has been dismissed. I have uh, the two certificates here of the classes I have, uh, I have completed. Uh, we also got my son, uh, now that COVID somewhat died down, got him evaluated as well. And I have a better understanding of what is going on. <laughs> and better saying what's going on with you. And is your intent at some point to be able to have totally unsupervised visitation with your son, is that correct? And establish yes. that relationship for the better? Yes, I'm, I'm, I want to rebuild and get back some of the time we lost at that separation and uh, have move forward and get closer as individuals and as a family. And this is your first experience with the criminal court system, is that correct? Yes, sir. First one in my family. Okay. And is your intention to, if you were granted community supervision or deferred adjudication, to follow that to the T, is that correct? Oh, to the utmost of my abilities. Okay. Your Honor, we have nothing further. All right, any questions? No, Your Honor. I have questions. Yes, sir. All right, so I always read the stipulations again, but I remember reading, I remember this case when I received it. So how old was your child? He was nine years old. And according to the stipulations that I've read, he was hit because he didn't make his bed. No, God. Okay, why was he, why did you hit him? He was spanked. Okay, so let me go through this. If I have time, I'm to Oh, we have time. Okay. <clears throat> My youngest daughter was sick. She had COVID. And uh, we had our nanny watch our other two children while we took my youngest daughter to get tested for COVID. Um, before leaving, I asked my son to mind his child, our nanny, uh, while I'm gone, because he was on it all week. And he said, yes. We left. Uh, of course, it took forever to get the COVID test and the three votes. Um, while we were waiting, I got a a video clip of my son uh, hanging over the banister of the stair, which is about a 10 foot drop onto the stairs. I told uh, Eric I was handling it when I get home. We got home. Um, I talked to my son, I reminded him of his promise. Uh, I also talked to him about why he was being spanked. 
because it was already grounded from TV, grounded from playing with the dogs. I thought I tried everything at that time. Um, so we talked, and I told him he's going to be spanking. We agreed on how many uh, spankings he would get. Um, like normal, because I was still nursing a broken leg from uh, falling in the snow here in February. I had a brace off that. The picture that bent him over my knees and spanked um, with a belt on my hand. Uh, this, I had him stand up on the face in front of our bed and commence to spank him. And unfortunately, uh, he moved. I guess from what he has told me, the lower back. Um, I mean, not what CPS tells you. Did you see the photos? No, I haven't seen any photos. Oh, State, do you have the photos? Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to show you the photos so you, you can see them. I find it odd that CPS would have you go through uh, their program and not show you photos. Because then, if you don't see photos, then, you know, what do you know? What have you learned? I'm not saying this. Well, I've been reading these stipulations, and it appears that this is not the first time that uh, you have spanked your son. And according to the stipulations, it says that your son is afraid of you. So I want you to see these photos. Sorry, there's my computer. No, it's, it's a Monday. It, it is Monday, but you know what? Everybody has some patience in their pocket. Your Honor, would you want the video? So, would she be able to give you the video? Or? No, we're going to show the bruises. So, here, here's, let me tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, this is a child. Uh, children do tend to push boundaries, but I found in my short time on the planet, even though more of my life is behind me in, than in front of me, I found on my short time on the planet that, that children like boundaries, even though they try to push them. So, whether your child was hanging from a chandelier, whether your nine-year-old was at, at, you know, out at the club at 2 a.m., there's no excuse for this. <clears throat> Although I do tell people now, if your child is, you know, Caleb from Children of the Corn, Damien, Rosemary's Baby, then we may be able to talk about this, but even then, this is not the right course to take. You understand? Well, I mean, not apologetic to me. You need to be apologetic to your son, because let me just tell you, when stuff like this happens, guess what? The bond has been broken. I don't know that. I only know that in the report after this happened, your wife gives a statement saying you're a great father. You didn't get any of the emails. Oh, I have the I have this the steps that, that are in here, but the fact the fact that you've never seen these photographs before tells me that there that CPS may. not have given you a well-rounded view of what's going on because i i'm a firm believer if if you cause injury to someone that's a physical injury you should see it hi guys oh that's it's okay. just technology if they're, they're they're coming through just taking it but see that is why we should have printouts of photos you know i remember back in the day and brent i know you don't know about this you had the camera with the flash you had to put on the top 
and then you would have to take it in and have someone develop it. Oh, <laughs> you know about that? Okay. Have you heard of Polaroids? Yes. We thought we were very uh, fancy, you know, once you got the Polaroid and now you don't even need that. Well, we would love to print them out, Judge, but you know how the budget goes. Yes. And Mr. Lewis, were you able to view the photos with your client? Judge, I did have uh, the photo, receive the uh, photocopies. I have not reviewed all of the photocopies with my client. Okay. He has seen all the other reports, but not the photos. Would you just like me to show him on the laptop, Judge? Yes. This is where things start becoming relevant. And see the the problem where you're saying you didn't know you hit him on the leg doesn't matter whether you didn't know you hit him on the leg or not you left bruises on a child You need to make sure your phones are off. So, Mr. Kesey, your son is afraid of you. And from those photos, he has good reason to be. So here's my question for you. 
where were his where was his mother when you were disciplining him she was upstairs to me to be and see i find that to be a problem because i don't know if i can trust her to protect her children because she says you are a good father and a good father does not do this and parents should not be disciplining children if you believe in corporal punishment and that's choices that people make you should not be engaging in corporal punishment when you're angry. And obviously, you shouldn't be engaging in corporal punishment at all. Yes. And I always tell parents this, because I've done child protective services cases before. I always tell them, you know, basically, when you hit a child, you know what you're saying? right makes might makes right and i'm in charge and you're not so you have a child who's not your height not your weight and you're welling on them because this wasn't a oh i hit him twice and he moved because he ended up with marks on his thigh and on his back and when you did that you didn't even stop you continued so don't give me this thing that you hit him once and he moved oh, no. because the marks are more than hitting him once. No, I and didn't say answer that. me this. I'm sure he was crying when you were doing this, was he not? And what were you thinking when you when he's crying and you continue to hit him? In this class, I wanted to take the moment before I my father-in-law now has moved in with his mother-in-law and they can tell you that that's off the table uh their counselor we made a house uh promise in the room with the children and the counselor saying off the table. Here's the thing. People make promises all the time. People will take the witness stand and swear to tell the truth and take an oath and then not tell the truth sometimes. So I've been involved with CPS cases where people say we're never going to do this again and they get their children back and then guess what? Uh, three months later, we're back for the same thing. You would never see me again. Mm -hmm. So here, counselor here that was in the room. That I made a promise to, mm -hmm. and he's still going to those counselors. All my children that are going to counseling, and I tend to go to counseling after this. Who's your child's counselor? Judge, that's Lori Berkman. She's present. All right. Then I want to hear from her. So, any qu more questions for Mr. Kesey State? No any questions? Are. Defense, any more questions for Mr. Kesey? Not for Mr. Kesey, Judge. All right. I want to hear from the child's counselor. No, you're not dismissed. I never thought I would be in civil court. All right. Come on up, please. Um, Mr. Villarreal, if you want to take that from her and I'll sign it. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. All right, you can lower your hand. Be sure to keep your voice up. Uh, can you state your name for the record, please? All right. Does anyone have any questions for the counsel, or am I going to just question her? Defense? Yes, there's just a couple of questions that I think you, you'll end up asking, but let me kind of set the, the tone. Ms. Berkman, how do you know the Kesey family? I began working as Jordan's counselor, um, Valentine's sister, older sister. I began working with her in October of last year. Good. And you are well aware of the uh, charges that we're here for today, is that correct? Yes, I've read the whole CPS report. 
have you had the opportunity to talk to Valentin, Casey? I have. Okay, and what are your observations based on your uh, on your professional opinion in counseling with Valentin? Um, at initially, Valentin did say that he was scared. He admitted that, and he felt like he was always getting into trouble. And but that was right after the event when we were just beginning in counseling. Over time, he has said that he feels more comfortable, that he's not scared anymore. They put in place every suggestion that I've made for other forms of discipline, which is actually positive discipline. So we're talking about things before they happen. We're talking about the consequences, and there is no corporal punishment at all. And based on kind of the new operating procedure that, that's been set in place, what are your long-term concerns with regard to the parenting situation or Mr. Kesey's parenting of, of Valentine? Actually, considering the severity of, of the initial report, I think that they have taken everything that I've given them and everything that the other, there was a prior counselor that was working with the, the Valentine as well, one of my colleagues, they've taken everything that we've given them and have run with it. They have set everything in place to keep everybody protected and healthy and safe. Have you also had an opportunity to talk to Ms. Mrs. Kesey? I have. Okay. And do you have concerns with regard to uh, her role in this situation or, or moving forward? I do not. Okay. I've seen a family that has over time been consistently involved. They have never missed an appointment. They are, they are, take everything that, uh, any suggestion that we give them and they work with it. I've done more than two family sessions with the whole group except Monty, the youngest child. And I see a really, a family that has come together in a really beautiful way. You are nothing further of this witness. All right. How long have you been a counselor? 24 years. And what are you a counselor of? I'm a licensed professional counselor supervisor. So I'm a generalized mental health therapist. All right. Why were you a counselor for Jordan? Oh, I was asked to see Jordan because she was manifesting a lot of anxiety after the um, initial event. And she also has um, a tendency to kind of follow Valentine, and we were concerned that she would begin to act out a little bit, but she never did. Who is the prior counselor? Bob Steed. Why is he prior? He moved to another practice and is no longer working with um, Alamo Heights Counseling. And it was easier to keep them together at the same practice. He's still located in a different So were you the counselor during the pendency of the CPS case? I was at the very, when I first started with Jordan in um, October of last year, I believe the case was still, it was, I didn't report to any CPS workers. I did not have any requests to speak with them ever. I just dealt with the family. All right. And who were the who was the person who supervised the visitations? Um, the visitation, I'm sorry. I'm the visitation between the father and the child, because they're usually visits. And I want to know who supervised those interactions. And I want to know how those interactions went. And when was the last time there was a supervised visitation? I was not involved with any supervised visitation. I don't know who provided supervision at those. I only saw them at the counseling office with, um, and with myself in the office at every moment. I never, they never were alone together at any point. So, but I don't know about the visitation that I don't do that part. All right. My agency provides supervision on occasion, but I don't think we did here. All right. And so have you seen the interaction between all the parties? Sir, please stop raising your hand. If we need you, we will call you. Thank you. All right. Have you seen the interaction in the home? No. So who was the, who was the caseworker who saw the interaction of the parties in the home? Because usually there's a monitor return. So who was the caseworker for the monitor return? I'm not aware. I don't know. All right, thank you so much. All right, Mr. Kesey.
Who handled who handled the supervised visitation? Uh, my father-in-law, Henry Dorsey. No, no, no. Usually, mm -hmm. there is a supervised visitation to begin with. They don't immediately begin with the in-laws are handling the supervised visitation. They, they did, no. I'm being okay. At first, I was separated from Val, from uh, Valentine, sorry, Valentine from uh, when this happened until February. 14th Valentine's Day, which is for two of the And from then on, uh, CPS put my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, because that's where they were staying, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with um, as uh, people with the two All right, has, has CPS done any monitor returns with you? Uh, they've come by, uh, but they finished up. Uh, and they told us they were finished. That was um, in July, I think. They said they were finished. Our case was closed for them. Who's the CPS worker? Uh, Oriana. Um, I have a case. Ms. Ferguson? He has the business card for the caseworker who is in charge of this case. Yes, um, can you see if they're available to zoom in? Because I have questions that have not been answered. What are the questions? All right. So, Mr. Lewis, what we're going to do, because I'm not going to make a decision until I've heard from the caseworker. I don't know everything that they have done, and I want to hear from the caseworker. What is their judge? Um, if you want to, you can remain logged on or you can um, log off. And I anticipate uh, if you could log back in probably at 1030. Absolutely, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Just have a seat. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Desiree King. I thought I smelled trash. All right, and Mr. Miss uh, Beniva, could you unmute? Yes. <clears throat> All right, uh, Miss Hayden, could you stand in for Mr. Villarreal? Of course, Judge. All right. So on this case, you all are silent. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, the court requested that the caseworker be present. Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear the firm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So hope you got. Yes, I do. All right. You can lower your hand. Could you state your uh, name for the record, please? Boriana Veneva. All right. And could you spell your first name? B O R Y A N A. And your last name, please. V-E-N-E-V-A. All right. Is there any objection from the state that this witness is appearing by video? No, Your Honor. Defense, do you have any objection to this witness appearing by video? No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Kesey, do you have any objection to this witness appearing by video? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, were you the caseworker involving uh, Mr. Kesey and his children? Yes, I was. All right. Did you ever do any monitor visits or monitor return with Mr. Kesey? Um, yeah, well, yeah, there was supervised visits between uh, him and his child. And did you ever view any of those supervised visitations? No, I did not. So who, who uh, viewed any supervised visitation that he had? It was the grandparents. Uh, he was court order for the grandparents to supervise the visits. So how does CPS know whether or not the visits went well or not? So uh, CPS confirmed with the grandparents and also interviewed the child multiple times and the child did not make any outcries. All right. So CPS never viewed any of the visitation. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All right. How often did you speak with the child? I would see the child on a monthly basis. All right. And did you see them uh, in the home or did you see them separately? 
I would see the, the children in the home. All right. And when you interviewed the child, was the child interviewed with the um, maternal grandparents being present? No, the child was interviewed privately, just me and the child. All right. In the home? Yes, in the home. When's the last time you spoke with the child? Uh, I believe he was in May of 2020 uh, before I closed the case. All right. And when you closed the case, what report did you give to the court as far as reunification? So uh, CPS closed the case with um, the, ch the child, Valentin, being supervised by the grandparents. The supervision continued uh, and we closed the case. All right. So it's CPS's intention that there's to continue to be supervision by the uh, maternal grandparents? Uh, would you repeat that, please? So CPS's intention is for there to be continued supervision by the maternal grandparents? So uh, CPS stepped out since um, Jeffrey Kissy completed uh, all the services and showed behavior changes. So I would leave that up to the court. We cannot make that determination. No, my question is, when you closed the case, did you as a part of your agreement to closing the case, was it CPS's intention that the maternal grandparents were to continue to supervise? Yes, that's that, that was the understanding, yes. All right, any questions uh, from the state? No, yeah, Your Honor. Defense, any questions? Just one question. How long does CPS intend for the supervision to, to continue, absent direction from the court? Was there any plan in place? Uh, CPS cannot determine that since there is a criminal case and he was court ordered to have those supervised visits. So CPS stepped outside, uh, closed the case. Since uh, he completed his services, showed behavior changes. We didn't have any outcries from the child or grandparents didn't um, express any concerns. So um, the case has been closed for over three months and uh, CPS cannot make that determination. Just briefly for the court, when you say that behavioral changes were made by Mr. Kesey, can you describe those behavioral changes that you have stated on a couple occasions? So um, when I was interviewing the child, the child didn't make any outcries of uh, physical discipline he uh, found other methods of disciplining his child um, other than physical discipline. Okay. You are nothing further. All right. Is this witness excused? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for appearing. Thank you. All right. The state is silent. Um, I'm really not inclined to give you deferred adjudication, but the state is silent. I think you should go to prison. But again, the state is silent. Who are the um, who are the maternal um, grandparents? What are their names? Henry Dorsey and Patricia Dorsey. Dorsey. Are they living in the household? No, they weren't. Yeah. Well, how are they supervising? But they are now, but at that time they weren't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So have they been supervising since the case has been closed? Yes, you are. All right. Where are you working? I'm working at Fort Sinem uh, Institute of Surgical Research. What are your hours? I work from 6.45 to sometimes uh, 6.15, 4 o'clock, depends on the experiment. Okay. All right, this is what the court is going to do. The court's going to give you eight years deferred adjudication. Um, you are only to have contact with Valentine Kesey in the presence of Henry and Patric Patricia Dorsey. So if they ever leave that home, you're going to leave the home. You understand? Eight years now? Yes. So, um, Defendant is allowed contact 
with Valentine Kesey under the supervision of Henry and Patricia. How do you spell the last name? Dorsey, D-O-R-S-E-Y. Under the super supervision of Henry and Patricia Dorsey. So there's not to be any contact with the children unless Henry and Patricia Dorsey are present. If Henry and Patricia Dorsey decide that they need to go on vacation and have a break, then you're going to have to leave the household. Do you understand? Uh, I'm going to do a 30 day jail sanction. And I'll give you work release. And that is going to start on um, the 16th. And so, well, because you need to let your employer know. Uh, so that's going to start on uh, the 18th. You're going to need to turn yourself in. Do you understand? So you're going to come to court on um, August 18th to turn yourself in. You need to let your job know that you're not going to be able to show up on the 18th. If you need to take a vacation day, then you're going to have to take a vacation day because um, that's when your um, jail sanction is going to start. And I'll give you work release with that. There is to be... Uh, parenting classes. And do the triple T with him. There's to be regular reporting to probation. By Zoom or in person. There's to be regular UAs. I'm going to want field visits. Sorry, probation. Their children involved. It needs to be at least three times uh, <clears throat> per month. A uh, $1,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent. Uh, no unsupervised contact with Valentin Kesey and probation. I've already stated the persons who are in charge of the supervised contact. It will be the maternal grandparents, not the mother. And you're also, there's also a nanny that lives at the home or that the home frequently. Would that uh, work as well? I'm sorry, what? There's also a nanny that is active in the home. Will that work as well as another supervision? No, no, no okay. because um, CPS, for what they've done, they said that the maternal grandparents are to be the supervised ease or supervisor sorry so that's who it's going to be i'm going to want proof of employment within 15 days there's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors uh probation is there anything else that he needs no, Your Honor. all right is there anything else that you need from the court in order to be successful um, how would this affect my security I have no idea. There's nothing in research for almost two million years for the federal government. I mean, I have no idea how that's going to affect that. But here's the thing based upon those injuries, you should be going to prison. So you're not. So, was the prison? Uh, probation will tell you where you need to um, check into. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's uh, right to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? All right, and I'm sorry, was there supposed to be an affirmative finding of family violence on this case? State? Uh, let me try. Or was that something based upon his um, clearance that the state decided not to? Because this is family violence. Can check the file. 
Yeah, Your Honor, my, to my recollection, that was not part of the plea agreement, but we certainly understand that that might have been an issue of discretion for the court. Great. Was it included on the plea paperwork? Mm -hmm. No, it was not. Okay. And we'll leave it up to the court. All right. So uh, those are the court's orders then. I'm showing you, giving you the trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. You can step up and write that, please. All right, so you'll need to turn yourself in. Uh, by the, um, I'm gonna give you till the 18th. So you need to turn yourself in by the 18th. And the deputies will let you know where you need to turn yourself in. All right, and we can go off the record. Uh, here's the thing, Mr. Kesey. I know you're, you're, you're telling me you're sorry for what you've done. I, I'm sorry, you need to step back. I know you're telling me you're sorry for what you're done, you've done. I know you've gone through classes. I'm a little disappointed that CPS didn't view um, the visitation that you had with your child. But at the end of the day, what you've done to your child, there's a bond that's been broken. And I know he's saying he forgives you. Children are very forgiving. I'm sure there were people who wanted him to forgive you. So um, I'm sure he did. I'm, I've done these type of cases before as a defense attorney, representing parents, representing children. And I know that sometimes intentionally or not intentionally, um, children feel the vibe in the household and feel like the family is not a family unit because I have this case that's pending. So those are the court's orders and you're lucky you're not in prison. All right, Chad Pulliam, you're welcome. Chad Pulliam, no, just have a seat. Chad Pullman. Yes, Thank you. where are we on this? You are